So I was scrolling through Dribbble trying to find UI elements to redesign for my last video, when I came across this design. I did end up taking this chart card to redesign, but later it got me thinking about the entire design. In common Dribbble fashion, it looks amazing, but doesn't actually make that much sense once you start zooming in. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So today we're redesigning it from scratch, from the ground up, so you know the right way to design a UI dashboard, and so you don't post your work on Dribbble and get made fun of by some dumb guy on YouTube with 1,500 subscribers. Let's go. Quick side note before we begin, if you do want to edit any of these files we're working on, stick around to the end of the video to find out how to get access to them for free. When I'm looking at this, the first thing I can think is that things are going to get cut off by the fold somewhere around here, and that's fine. I can scroll, but if I'm going to have to, I don't want all this space up here while the important shit is down at the bottom. So our first order of business is to do an assessment of the hierarchy and probably end up tossing a few elements in the process. Let's break this down into what I'm going to call the header of this UI and the rest of it. For this header, I'm thinking we could shove this all into a sidebar that could also be handy for navigation. Firstly, the menu and logo look good to me. That's a hell of a lot better logo than I could certainly make. But we definitely don't need to announce that this is a financial dashboard, since that should hopefully be apparent. Next, we're going to give Dwayne Tatum some coworkers so he's not a CEO assistant without a CEO. We'll also add a button to manage the team just in case Dwayne wants to fire someone in the future. Now we have two search bars that look like they do exactly the same thing, so we're going to get rid of one. I also don't know the last time I saw a financial dashboard with the option to dictate text, but I'm going to go out on a limb and remove that too. I don't think the date is entirely necessary, but we might add it in if we have room. However, this button is definitely necessary, and more than that, we shouldn't have to click on the button to see our tasks. We'll move this to the side and turn it into a separate section later. Let's build out our sidebar now that we've gotten down to the essentials. We'll go at the very top, followed by the menu icon. Then we'll put our team next and the settings all the way at the bottom. Lastly, I assume this button is to add a widget or a section to the dashboard. This is a pretty good feature, but it's in an awkward spot, so we'll put it in our sidebar instead. If we choose to collapse the menu, I'm thinking it could look something like this. Alright, now we've opened up all the space up here, but also kind of screwed it up down below. Let's move the sidebar for a second so we can get a better understanding of what we're working with. There are 12 cards or elements here, and many of them look pretty useless. For example, the system lock should be integrated with the credit card information so you can lock the card online when you accidentally send Bill Gates a Bitcoin after he promised to send you two back. Anyways, the growth rate should definitely be part of the annual profits card. I don't even have a clue what is going on with this 13 days card, but I'm getting rid of it. This chart also should be included in the annual profits card too. This questionnaire at the bottom is bulky and provides no real value to us. Maybe we'll find a way to work it in later, but we're getting rid of it for now. That just leaves these elements for us. Let's start with the modals that we'll be adding elements to, so the credit card widget and the annual profits widget. You know when I said, in common dribble fashion, it looks amazing, but doesn't actually make that much sense once you start zooming in. Well, this is what I mean. This looks like a credit card which can receive direct deposits. Or send them for that matter either. So I'm going to scrap this direct deposit button and instead replace it with our lock card button. We'll also get rid of this receive button since you can't really receive money with a credit card. I don't know what the hell is going on with this design. I like the idea of actually having a credit card on here with our number on it. I'm going to take some inspiration from the wise card, and by that I mean steal it entirely. We'll apply our brand colors, but this is lacking something. I'm going to take our logo, blow it up, and reduce the opacity. Now things are starting to make sense. With these changes, we need to retitle the card to something better. I'm going to replace the monthly fee with a minimum payment, and add the due date. Lastly, I'll add a way for us to scroll to more cards if we wanted to add more than one to this dashboard. When it comes to laying out the dashboard, let's think about this as a grid, where the more important information should be higher and farther left. Without knowing how the other modals will shape up, let's just try ranking the importance of the modals as we make them. Think about this as our tier list. Credit cards are certainly important financial information, so I'm going to give it a mid-level priority for now. You know what makes less sense than receiving money on a credit card? This chart. Its design is honestly pretty sound, but without any labels, these numbers don't mean anything. We don't need any massive changes just to add some much needed context. I've made the executive decision that having a chart like this, along with the growth percentages, is repetitive, so we're trashing the chart entirely. To add the growth percentages, we're going to use these chips with the percentages for every level. Not much else needs to be changed, but as far as the importance of this information, I'd say it's pretty low. Let's move on to the next one. This is the chart we redesigned in this video, so if you want the entire breakdown, check out that video after this one. But basically, curving data lines like this, bad. And fading out the data line, worse. Other than that, we just moved things around, added some grid lines, and a time scale selector. However, in an effort to match the theme of the dashboard a little better, I'm going to make a few minor tweaks. Instead of having this slider to select the time scale, we'll change this into a dropdown. 
I'll also add a compare button just in case there are multiple portfolios that they want to compare across. Finally, I'll put this icon back to take the user to a full screen version of this chart. I'm going to put this in the low priority level too, since while it's nice to view your investments, you don't generally need to access them on a regular basis. The largest and probably second most important modal is the activity manager. Let's examine. Everything up here looks pretty good except for this minimize icon, since I'm not entirely sure how we'd make this much smaller. I'll replace that with an all activities button instead. However, the same cannot be said for down below. This wallet verification makes sense, but the other two? Let's start with this card. It's a pretty diagram, but entirely useless. Same with this navigation. Am I expected to click on these tiny circles to navigate around? I honestly have no clue what they were going for here, so we're turning this into a fraudulent activity alert. Every good alert starts with this icon. We can then add the amount, date, and place the transaction took place. That makes much more sense than what we started with. Next up, for the business plan, we're once again missing too much context to make sense of what this is. I do however like this diagram, so I'm going to flip this 90 degrees and change the colors a little bit. We'll turn this into a bank loan approval instead. Just add the loan amount and the repayment date, and we're good to go. Activity of the day-to-day -day business is definitely a high priority function, so up it goes. Okay, now we're going to take this button and turn it into an entire modal so we can actually view our tasks. For the layout, we're going wide and thin, and I was originally thinking we could fit four reminders in here. But in keeping with the margins from the other modals, we'll do two cards and add some filters too. Of course, with only two here, we'll need a way to view them all, so let's put a big red button up here for that. Of course, we'll also need a way to add new reminders, so we'll put that right beside our All Tasks button. Seeing as this was pretty much our call to action, this should be a high priority modal. Brilliant. Our next modal is for income and expenses. It contains some pretty important information, but has basically no visuals or anything to represent the data. Let's fix that. I'm thinking the best way for us to represent money coming in and out is by having a two-sided bar chart, with the bars that extend upwards representing income and the bars that extend downwards representing expenses. Let's slap that at the bottom of the card. We'll give this one a title of revenue and expenses and pop the dollar values back on there. Lastly, we'll add an icon to take us to the full screen chart. From a business standpoint, income and expenses seem pretty important, so high priority. Alright, that is all of our sections designed out, so let's start putting them together, starting with our high priority modals. With the task calendar being the furthest top left, we have two orientations, but this one leaves an awkward gap that will be difficult to fill with something, while the other does not. Our only mid-level priority is the active cards, so we're going to slot that in here. Lastly, we can pop our low priority modals down here and look at how well that fits together. I may have planned that out a little bit. But we have a clear gap that we do need to fill out. No offense to the original creator, but I just don't think there was a ton of financial thought behind this dashboard. It's clearly lacking some sort of line of credit section, so that's exactly what we're going to slot in here. Originally I was thinking of using a layout like this, but then I thought, wait a minute, let's use a pie chart instead. Data representation people, it'll make or break the UI and UX of your dashboard. So anyways, we throw in a pie chart, toss the interest payment, because who cares about that, and then add this kebab icon just in case someone actually does care about it. Then we can slot that perfectly into our empty space. Fellas, that is a solid looking financial dashboard that is slightly more usable now. If I missed any changes, let me know in the comments down below. And if you want access to all the files that we worked on today, it'll be the first link in the description down below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.